The simple project we're building in this video is one of the best exercises that I know of to really hone aluminum TIG welding technique. Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we are going to be building a basic aluminum cube. I'm not the first to do this project, but I do think it is one of the best exercises to do as you learn TIG welding. Obviously I could cut these myself, but I just purchased a kit because I'd rather spend my time welding. I am going to clean up these shear cut edges. Now you could weld them just as is and it would probably turn out just fine. I'll just use a Scotch-Brite pad on a rotary tool. Now, some people have had trouble with wax deposits and things like that off of uh, pads like this. I haven't had a lot of issues, but your results may vary. And I'm gonna wipe everything down with some acetone on a rag, and this just gets rid of any dirt or debris. In addition to the actual pieces for my project, I prepared two coupons, and this is something I like to do whenever I'm working on an actual project, is just run a quick test weld. Now, as far as the AC settings, we are running that 140 amps, and I have it set to 75% electrode negative on my balance. That's going to work really well because this is pretty clean material. And I've set the frequency to 80 hertz, which works pretty well for this thickness of material. I'd run a higher frequency for thinner material and a lower frequency for thicker material. Now in order to tack aluminum together, I'm just placing it on the outside corner of my weld table. You could do this on a scrap piece of square material or angle iron. Once those are held in place, I'll get my tungsten in there with a nice arc length. And then I'll start off at a lower amperage and then as soon as I see some metal starting to form a puddle, I'll just floor it and give it full amperage and let off. And that usually works pretty well for me to get an aluminum tack without using filler. There are some people who will just go right in and give it full amperage right away. I like to get my arc established first, make sure it's in the right place, and then give it that amperage. Run my pass along here, just making sure everything's flowing in nicely, and it seems to be running pretty well. I'm happy with it. Um, at least that weld, while not perfect, is good enough. In order to put this cube together, I'm going to tack up the first two pieces in the same way that I did those coupons, just placing it there on that corner and putting a tack in quick, hot and fast. Once I have two tacks on that and I've formed that L shape, I can turn it on its side and then for the rest of the pieces, I'm going to set them on top so they're offset a little bit but I'll line up one corner so the corner is just right and then tack it in place. And once that's locked in place, I can easily bend that tack and rotate it around so the pieces line up. I just repeat this process to install each of the pieces on my cube here. Now that all of the parts are installed, it's time for a whole lot of welding. Now in order to make this easier, I'm gonna go ahead and deposit some extra filler metal on each corner. Now I'm trying to melt my material, but not too deep. I'm mainly trying to deposit some material so it'll be there to help me out as I tie these welds together. This is a trip that I learned from Roy Crumrein at Crummy Welding when I took a welding class from him about a year ago. Once I've deposited that filler metal, I'll go ahead and run a weld pass along each side. Now, as I run these outside corner joints, there are a few things to keep in mind. One is I wanna make sure that my arc length is pretty short so I'm down in that joint but not so far that I'm dipping my tungsten. Now as I run along here, I'm also maintaining a good angle where I'm coming in 45 degrees right into that joint and then I'm also making sure that my filler metal is feeding directly right into the front leading edge of that puddle all the way along on each of these joints and they're coming out pretty well. I just take a second on each corner and then strike an arc real quick to help clean it up and round it over and the cube itself is done. Well, at the end of the day, this cube turned out pretty well. It's not perfect, but I'm definitely happy with it. If you learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up or leave me a comment down below and we'll see you next time.